all lands in the Republic of Ghana have been entrusted in the care of one man, the president. And he is supposed to hold these lands in trust for all of us. Everything on the face of the land, everything beneath the land, and the constitution says, the streams, the rivers, all of them, if there are minerals in them, on them or in them, or under them, they are all entrusted in one man, the president, to hold in trust for the people. This morning we asked the question, how well has President Nana Adodankwa Akufuado done in keeping that trust, that fiduciary responsibility in the lands, the mineral resources, even on the continental shelf, the constitution says, that have all been entrusted to his care for our welfare. It is said that the voice of the people is the voice of God. Does Akufuado hear the voice of God when it comes to Galamse that threatens what the professors say generational extinction? Or he only hears God when he needs a cathedral? If he doesn't hear God, but God's voice can be heard in the people, does he hear the people? The Trace Union Congress, starting with the Ghana Medical Association last week, nine organizations under that association or in the health sector asked the president to declare a state of emergency and ban small-scale mining, legal or illegal. The two UC have joined. There's a group known as the Forum, embracing a number of organizations. Now there is the Ghana Coalition Against Galamse, where all these bodies come together, including the Media Coalition Against Galamse, Occupy Ghana, One Ghana Movement, Architects, Farmers, the Catholic Bishops' Conference. They must be tired. They've issued statements upon statements over a long period now. And now there's a new group of the clergy on the blog, the Apostolic Fathers, your Duncan Williams, Istu Danabes, all of them in one voice, in unison. Does the president hear them? The president has been speaking through his minister of lands and natural resources. And they say, you will not get that ban. We will be asking further questions of the duty bearers. Why? What the people want. The voice of God. A president who hears God's voice to build a cathedral cannot hack into their voices. Babies are being born with deformities. Six legs, six fingers. Without genitals. All of that traced to the mercury, the lead. Very toxic. Even the vapor of it being inhaled by pregnant women. 
kidney diseases on the increase, all of it being traced to this. The Ghana Water Company, in some places, only needed to treat the water at 200 turbidity levels. They have compromised and now are looking for water at a turbidity level of 2,000 they can find. They say the water has been polluted to a turbidity level of not 5,000, not 10,000, 14,000. They can't treat with alum anymore. They are treating with polymers, which cost four times the price of alum. Does the president hear? People are getting out of their homes. They are not going into the forest. Out of their homes to attend to nature's call. And the whole earth opens up and swallows them. Because of Galamse. Is the president aware this is happening in Ghana? The NDC says it has discovered some very wrong things in the electoral roll, the register. But for some reason, the EC, having listened to part of what the NDC has to say, says, we are resolving your problems. The NDC says, we cannot trust that you can actually resolve the problems by yourself. We need an audit. The EC says, shut up. In 2016, when Let My Vote Count Alliance of the NPP was asking for a similar thing, an audit, you had no problem with the register. The register then had animals representing human beings. You didn't complain, so shut up. We'll get into this, and this is part of my take. We'll be right back. The commission strongly believes that the surest way to attaining a credible and robust register is not through demonstrations. There is simply nothing to demonstrate about. This is because the commission has repeatedly requested the data on discrepancies from the NDC to no avail. We are of the view that the stand taken by the NDC will not produce a credible register. The commission is of the view that the best place to resolve the issues they have identified is the discussion table. We urge them to submit details of the discrepancies they have identified to, the, to enable the commission to investigate the issues and demonstrate to them that the concerns they have have been resolved. As indicated earlier, the EC assured the NDC during the meeting that it would conduct a thorough investigation and report on the issues they had detected within a week. Why are they refusing to submit the data to enable the EC to investigate and provide a report? The EC believes that the best way to ascertain the credibility and integrity of the 2024 voters register is the discussion table, not on the streets. They are playing a chase-up game on us mm. because we left this in 2015. They, say, they, they said, oh, MPP is talking nonsense. MPP is talking rubbish. Having uh, the EC of today different from the EC in 2016, if that is their own admission and that they are not proud of their history as an institution, then we thank them for confirming all the things we have been saying about it. Where were the plants and animals? Those people who are in EC now, 
The only people who have changed are the MPP people they appointed and added. And so if they are claiming that the 2016 register was not EC register, but it was NDC register, by implication they are telling us that 2024 register is MPP register. Mm. You know, so you go, I don't think that they, they think through the, some of these pronouncements because before they make them. We have institutional image, institutional perpetual succession, and so on. So why on earth? with anybody from the institution they represent come to blame NDC for the work of that same institution they are representing. Mm. Fact, that finally, they, they, they say that demonstrations won't change anything, it won't lead to a credible register, and so they want John Mahama to appeal to you people to come to the table. They expect to speak to you so that they can resolve your concerns and not for you to go out there I'm and demonstrate. Sorry, they, are, they are assuming that John Mahama cannot think for himself because the election we are going into is a presidential election and parliamentary election if there is any interest to be protected there John Muhammad's interest is greater than all of us Welcome back. This is News File. It's your most authoritative news analysis platform. We'll go straight and get some answers for you over the questions that leading the NDC to a nationwide demonstration, which the EC says is unnecessary because it will resolve nothing. I'll ask the question, why are they not also looking at the court? Because that's where we resolve the issues when the parties cannot agree to amicably settle and resolve them. The NDC is complaining that as many as 243,000 plus previous transfers, transfer votes, have illegally been added to the 2024 uh, register, including what they call repeated names. They point to 14,000, 15,000 plus unidentifiable voter transfer paths which they say are potential issues with fake registrations they point to in excess of 3000 almost 4000 voters in the 2023 register deleted from the 2024 provisional register due to the transfers they are speaking to in excess of 2000 voters transferred to different polling stations, but not listed in the absent voter list as required by law. So far, the EC has admitted three mistakes, calls them mistakes. And these are inaccurate voter registration figures, uh, faulty voter registration graphics, and errors in transferred voters. It admits to that. But, why is he refusing the audit that the NDC is requesting? Dr. Omani Buama is Director of Elections and IT of the NDC. He joins us via Zoom. Also, Dr. Bosman Asari is Deputy Chairman, Corporate Services at the EC. He joins us via uh, phone. We will speak to them in the next 20 minutes, strictly. And after that, here in the studio, we have John Alote, who is Chief Executive, Forestry Commission. The duty bearers are here in the studio to take your questions. So even ahead of my interaction with them, uh, transparency, I open up to you. Send me all the questions that bother you about the job that the duty bearers are supposed to be doing. Duty bearers starting from the President, the Minister of Lands, the Minerals Commission boss, who is here in the studio, Forestry Commission boss, who is here in the studio. Martin Kwekwe is the Chief Executive, Minerals Commission. He's here in the studio. Professor Gladys Nyako Ansa is Associate Professor and Co-Principal Investigator of the University of York, UK, University of Ghana, Galamsey Project. Professor 
Dr. Paul Poku Sampene Osei, a senior lecturer and professor in forensics and histopathology, KNUST School of Medicine and Dentistry. Histopologist, he is at the Confanochi Teaching Hospital as well, Kumasi. He joins us via Zoom from outside of the jurisdiction. So let me go straight to Dr. Omani Boama to begin with. Thank you for joining us, sir. Welcome, Samson, and a very good morning to you, your uh, panelists, who I believe will do justice to the Galamse Menes mm. and to Ghanaians who are watching and listening to us this morning. Assuming I have not heard you uh, about the figures you put out and the particulars and the heads of irregularities or wrongs or mistakes on the part of the EC that you accuse the EC of and for which you say you have not been listened to and therefore you are going to uh, on a demonstration. Please help my viewers, the millions in Ghana and abroad who are watching us this minute, help them understand what your issues are in the next five minutes. Thank you very much, uh, Teacher Samson. Hmm. I know your five minutes is exactly five minutes. I'll hold you to it. I know. <laughs> hmm. um, we must say that prior to this exhibition exercise, the Electoral Commission was expected to have given the register to the political parties ahead of time for us to be able to study it. And indeed, the Electoral Commission appropriately wrote to us and indicated that we were to submit hard drives to collect the registers. Unfortunately, this letter was written as far back as July. August came, the hard drives were unavailable to us. Then they reassured us that on the 14th of August, we were going to receive the register. That also passed. Then they communicated that it was going to be received on the 16th. 16th came and passed, and we still did not receive it. Unfortunately, the exhibition was commencing on 20th of August. That meant that we barely had four days to the exhibition exercise. That weekend passed. 19th, the day to the exhibition. It was afternoon that the Electoral Commission released the register to us as NDC. That indeed put a lot of strain on us, but we are committed to building our democracy because we've opted for that path as a nation, and it is an appropriate path. It's a peaceful path. It helps to deepen development in nations. So we work around the clock 24-7 distributed the registers constituency by constituency basis to all the 276 and constituencies and asked them to begin to scrutinize. Whilst they were doing it, we also at the national level ran some comparative analysis by comparing the end 2023 register that was used for the district level election with the 2024 provisional voters register that had been given. So the software analysis, and we shared the exact software that we used with the Electoral Commission when we met them last week, Friday. So far, the revelation are startling. They include 243,540 previous transfers that have been added to the 2024 transfers, 15,000 plus unidentifiable transfer parts. And the question is, where are they coming from? Where were they registered? 3,957 voters in 2023 register who are completely missing from the 2024 register. 2,094 transfers not found in the absent list. And the last but not least is the corrupt files. Where you open the file, 
You don't find the photo, you don't find the name, you don't find the age. So we presented all these in addition to other discussions. But you'll recall that prior to the meeting, based on past experience with the Electoral Commission, which has basically eroded trust between us, we wanted the media to cover it live so Ghanaians and the media will know exactly what had transpired. Unfortunately, the Electoral Commission blocked the media and blocked our request and refused to allow us to bring in the media to cover the program. Let me start our germane concern because I know your five minutes is your five minutes. Look, consider a person whose name will not appear on the register. When we raised it at the meeting, the chairperson of the Electoral Commission said, while the person is holding a voter's ID card, they can write the person's name on the register. We vehemently opposed that and said, and I remember saying, that will be the Richard Ahiagba criminal phenomenon. You can imagine the people who may be able to show up there with fictitious ID cards, and then some presiding officers who may be compromised will just write their names and allow them to vote. So that is not something that we should be considering. The other variant is the EC has admitted to some errors. We don't call them mistakes, to some errors. When they correct those errors, how do they expect the people whose errors they've corrected to know that they have indeed effected the corrections? So that led to one of the recommendations that we made, which the EC so far has not spoken to, beyond the fact that they will not permit a forensic audit. And our remedy was that at least there should be a re-exhibition of their corrected or their updated register so that people who had complaints, people who paid money to verify their ID mm. situation and witnessed eye problems and reported can be assured that indeed the corrections have been made. Otherwise, we may end up even introducing a because of if the person feels that, well, I complain, but am I sure that it's been corrected? Did I go to the um, polling station on December 7? Mm. To reassure that Ghanaian, that ordinary Ghanaian that, yes, it has been corrected, just re-exhibit the register again. Right. Unfortunately, the EC, after blocking the... Um, request for the forensic audit of the register and the EC's IT system also has been mute about the re-exhibition. Right. Then it leads me to the issue of what we ask for and what they also ask for. In there, the EC asks that we submit our findings to them. And we also said that since we had made it clear to them that, okay, because our work is ongoing, can we also, in, in exchange, have, we didn't oppose submitting our findings to them. We are ready and willing. Can we also have what you claim to have updated so that in our comparative analysis, we do not excavate and identify problems that you've already resolved? Mm. But, but when that, when, doesn't you, that sound like a... Uh, uh, good morning, uh, Council. Good morning to your uh, viewers, listeners as well. Uh, l let me let me state very clearly that uh, from the onset 
uh, as Mr. Wane, Dr. Wane Buama pointed out, we had a meeting with the NDC. In this particular meeting, they made it very clear that they had identified some issues. And there was a presentation that was After the presentation, they gave the impression that within the next few days, uh, we were going to get details of their presentation. So in that meeting, the commission agreed that give us that particular evidence with the NDC acceded so that when we finish and we do it today, we will inform you. In that same meeting, the NDC lead person on technology who did the presentation. I remember, I think the name is Mr. Yaira Kuku. He, he gave a particular voter ID card which was missing in the register. In that same meeting, our IT lead person also indicated that this person you are saying is missing from the register, this person is indeed actually in the register. Beyond that, uh, Mr. Ayemini, we told the NDC that all the concerns should be raised. When you look at the uh, CI-91, as amended by 126, the exhibition exercise, which is stated in Regulation 23, it emphasizes that once you do a registration, it's not going to be perfect. It's essential for you to display the register so that when some names are missing, you will include them in the register. When some names are not properly written, you will write them properly. When names are omitted in that manner, so the exhibition exercise is a self-auditing mechanism embedded in our electoral democracy. So we made it clear to the NDC that all that concerns you are raising, they are part of what we were expecting as far as the exhibition is concerned. And Mr. Ayemeni, I can say without a shadow of doubt that all the concerns the NDC has raised, the Commission strongly believes that we have addressed them. Because during the exhibition exercise, it was meant to do correction. And we've, we've called the NDC repeatedly that the evidence you claim you have, them to us. Once you bring them to us, we cross-check because we know we have done everything. Beyond that, Dr. Uh, Guava mentioned that some 240,000 or so people uh, transfer list have been added to the 2024. We compared this register in 2020. We added some people on to it, about 910,000 people on to it in 2023. And in 2024, we've added almost 880,000 or so. 2020 register was given to the parties. 2023 was given to the parties. 2024 has been given to the parties. So we at the Electoral Commission, we believe that by giving it to you, you can go through those internal processes to make sure if people are missing. And we are saying that we have addressed all these concerns. And when you look at the transfer issue, because we did the transfer in 2020 and 2023, when we were in the data, the data, all the transfers were put together which we've explained to you. So it's not as if the UC is trying to hide something from the NDC or from the good people of our country. And we have maintained that the best way to be able to address any problem the NDC has is that let's come to the discussion table. Because all the things you are talking about, they are the reasons why we are doing the exhibition exercise. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to say the commission is perfect. Neither am I trying to say we are angelic in the way we do our work. Definitely, because you are dealing with human beings, numbers, some people's pictures may not be captured properly. The, the, the corrupt files he mentioned, for example, all these things have been addressed. And we are saying that uh, NDC, if still you have certain genuine concerns, our doors are open. When you talk about, uh, Dr. Maniboma was talking about forensic audit. Once you talk about, I'm not an auditor, neither am I, but once you talk about forensic audit, you are, you are suspecting some fraud in the system. But these are registers that have been given to you. You should be able to cross-check and match numbers and be sure. And the EC is saying that all these things have been addressed. It's the reason why we do the exhibition mm. exercise. If, so if you still have concerns, you come to us. And if, the evidence you told us that uh, Dr. Mani mentioned that 15,000 transfers, they cannot vouch for where they were moved from. 3,954 or so people have been removed. And we are saying, bring us the evidence. Let's put the evidence. 
uh, into scrutiny. And we, Electoral Commission, we are saying that we have addressed all these concerns. Uh, explain and that ex explain to me. Concerns, ex come ex to the discussion table. Explain to me, Dr. Bosman. The NPP is interested in having a credible register. The uh, NPP is interested. We, the Electoral Commission, that's what we do for a living. Right. Our Dr. Bosman. Our are on the line. And we've got to make sure that we have a register that is credible, that is robust, that is inclusive. When we talk about a register, Mr. Ayinari, the register is the bedrock of the election. Mm. So we, we will do everything possible, everything necessary. Th thank you, but can you hear me? To ensure that we have a document that will stand Do up. Dr. Sari, can you hear me? Many countries are learning from us. They are coming to us. Dr. So Sari, can you hear me? If you have concerns, come to us. That's why in our press conference we are... I hear you. Dr. Bosman Sari, can you hear me? All right. Can you hear me, Dr. Bosman Sari? Hello, Dr. Bosman so Sari. We are doing it for the good people of our country. Uh, Dr. Bosman Sari, you can't hear me. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Kindly explain to me, when you say all the issues they have raised, you have resolved them, and yet you want them to come and sit for what? Mr. I was making the point that if they still have concerns that those issues have not been addressed, well, we need to sit down so that we explain everything to you. Mm. We get our IT experts to explain everything. And you know, in that meeting, NDC assured that they were bringing us the evidence. You mentioned 3,954 without any uh, substantiation. You haven't given any evidence. Give them to us. And, and we've also said, if you still have any concerns that the problems have not been addressed, the, the best way to do it is to come to the discussion table. Okay. So, so we, listen, we listen to, to them, them listen, listen to them. So that we show them the evidence that all these things you are raising, we have done them. Dr. The Sari, listen to them. Is it fair, is it fair when they say that we've shown you a number of issues, those we have made full disclosure on to you, you have just come to tell us you have resolved them. We don't have evidence of the resolution. So if we have extra issues, we cannot trust that if we give them to you, re you resolve them. What is the problem with giving them proof of the resolution of the three that you have admitted? Uh, Mr. Henry, when you look at our system, uh, the, the data center we operate, it's not something like yes, but you are but just uh, popping a register and giving it to a political but It goes through a lot of processes. So that's why we said, if you have any critical, we have been like, that. you know, what we do is that we, we get the register to the parties ahead of the vision exercise. Before the final, before the election member, we are going to give the party again the final register. You know, so we go a legal process, uh, people who have subjected, people who did that to put students in the register, they go to a legal system where magistrates will say include them or include them in that manner. And we want to finish all those processes and then we put a final document together, which will be used for the activity in December. So what, when we say NDC should come to the discussing table, come and let's discuss, let's show you the everything. All right. Hold and on, also Hold on for me. Dr. Mani Boyama. Certain uh, things have not been done. Do Dr. Mani Boyama, is, is this not reasonable that, yes, you have given us a part of your issues. We have told you and assured you that we have resolved them. But at this time, we cannot give you the evidence. Whatever extra issues you have, bring them to us. We will resolve those also. And then there is an appointed time when we will give all parties the register one more time. This is provisional. Then we'll give you the final one so you can confirm if your issues you raise have been resolved or not. Is this not reasonable? Is it not fair? Some say thanks once again. This is based on the premise of trust. The Electoral Commission has eroded the last atom of trust that we had in them. And we had a plethora of evidence. Your, your time limitation will not allow it. Credibility-wise, 
reliability-wise, and even self-interestedness. As a result of that, we decided that, look, let us deal with the issues that arose out of the meeting. And that is why it is sad that the Electoral Commission that has transparency in their motto prevented the media from covering it. Otherwise, a lot of the issues we are raising, you would have had them within your systems already. I have said four issues arose, and the four issues are interconnected and related. The EC should not cherry pick. What were the four issues? One, forensic audit. Two, that we will submit our findings. Three, that after the forensic audit, re-exhibition, that was a proposal that came from us. And then the fourth is, we sent a hard drive, an empty one, that you, even before this meeting, you've been saying you've addressed our issues. If you have, let us have them so that as we keep on scrutinizing the register, we will not be doing double work, work that you have already done. Of these four, the EC has said, we are not going to permit forensic audit. As for re-exhibition, if Dr. Bosman Asari can inform us what their position is, because we believe after all that they claim they are doing, which we must believe that they are effecting, the people who are concerned, ordinary voters, the people you are seeing on the screen, should be able to confirm that yes, it's been done. Are they ready to allow for re-exhibition? Till date, they've not spoken about that. So one, they block the forensic audit, which we asked for. Two, they block the re-exhibition, which we asked for. Three, they have blocked making available their claimed resolution of the issues so far. They won't give us all the three, but they insist that we should trust that if we provided them with additional information, they are going to address them. This is not equity. What, what, what's, what section 23 of uh, 23 of CI 91 provides is that there will be an exhibition of the register. And this is what they say they have done. And you participated in the process. And the purpose of the exhibition is so that there could be inclusion of omitted names. There could be objections to names of unqualified voters on the register. There could be removal of names of diseased persons from the register. Objection to names on the multiple or exception list. Replacement of poor quality or damaged voter ID cards. And correction of errors such as wrong spelling of names, age, sex, and wrong registration center codes, among others. Is this not the laid down process that allows the correction that you seek? And why do you want to bypass this for an, an audit? And it does appear you are looking for an audit by an independent body rather than the EC. What CI-91 never anticipated is the contest of stolen biometric voter registration kits under CCTV surveillance under the headquarters of the Electoral Commission. What CI-91 didn't anticipate is the criminal transfer of voters in their absence from Tamale South to Pusiga. And the EC, now after we put it out, coming to admit that they have now introduced the liveliness test so that you cannot just present a person's photo to the screen and the screen will allow for transfer. Dr. Bosman said they were expecting certain things. If they were expecting, 
How come they didn't anticipate the criminal transfers that took place? And it had to require the revelation for them to come and assure us that they have now introduced the liveliness test. So Samson, we are not dealing with an ordinary situation. And unless anybody will want to suggest that a re-exhibition of the register after all the so-called corrections have been effected is going to be against the letter and spirit of the law. We don't buy that. That is one. Two, the forensic audit. It is based on lack of trust. The Electoral Commission says we will not grant it. It is in their bosom. The data is with them. We cannot force them to grant it. But the Constitution also allows us to engage in public manifestation, to take our issues to the good people of Ghana, the very people that we are seeking to protest, so that when they go to the polling stations on December 7, they will, be, they will find their names in the register. That is all that we are seeking to do. A similar exercise in 2016 by the NPP led to scenes that we don't want repeated. Uh, horse whips that were used to whip people, water cannons that were uh, hot water thrown at people. People lost their eyes in that kind of demonstration. Why will you choose that path? If you feel the EC is not ready to listen to you, why won't you choose the path of the arbiter of last resort, the courts? Thompson, you know better. Your knowledge in law is way beyond mine. ADR before the courts. Is this independent forensic audit, which we, we have even on countless occasions suggested that the UNDP should be the facilitator? And in a variant where political parties can even propose the IT experts to do it. What form of technology-driven ADR would this be? Should we be running to the courts every time? The courts will be choked. So if they don't want the time-tested principle of ADR, and they want us to go and stand in court and be no we have opted for the ADR approach. They don't want it. ADR, have, ADR, is, ADR is voluntary. At, as, it, exactly. as, as it stands so, now, you are, directing, the says, you are directing the EC. As it stands now, you are seeking to compel the EC. The EC will point you to the Constitution. Article, is it, article is it 46. That says we that they are the not supposed to be under the direction of anybody apart from the constitution. What would you say to that? Thompson, when we directed them that their arithmetic was wrong, they didn't say they are not supposed to be under our direction during the limited voter registration. They quickly corrected it. We corrected them again. They didn't say they are not supposed to be under our direction. They corrected it. You understand? So let's interpret the constitution purposely. All I'm saying is, look, the EC, see, it's sad that the EC is demonstrating to Ghanaians that they have something to hide. They have One, told you, you ahead of time. The they have told you ahead of time that your demonstrations will, will amount to nothing. Well, let's cross the bridge when we get there. Tuesday, coming Tuesday, 17th September, Ghanaians will rise up in their numbers across the 16 regions of Ghana with the epicenter being Accra, and show that enough is enough of the many errors. I don't call them mistakes. And there are some of them that we are right to suspect are even deliberate. There are some of them that are criminal. That's obviously, and they have not even denied okay. the ones that are criminal. Hmm. We think that if they have nothing to hide, they should accept the forensic audit to be facilitated by the UNDP. Okay, Dr. Mani Buama, thank you very much. Um, as you have admitted, you have well, clearly admitted today, we want to deal with the issue of the existential threat, uh, Galamse, uh, part two of what we started last week. Of course, we understand 
that this republic must be a peaceful place before we can be having such discussions. If elections will turn uh, violent and bloody and there will uh, not be a government or there will be a situation that would, does not allow us to do this, then this discussion itself will not be uh, useful. That's why we decided that we deal with this issue, however brief, before we move on to the matter of Galamse. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Bosman Asari, as it, I'm, I'm here. Yes, as it, as it stands now, your position, which you have expressed, has been completely rejected. You say you don't give a damn. They should go and bend the sea. Is that where we are? Uh, uh, we, we, we at the Electoral Commission think that the NDC leadership who have uh, taken to uh, the route of demonstration here is informing their, their people. Uh, they seem to be exaggerating problems in the register which are, which are non-existent. The Commission has made it very clear, openly to the NDC, openly to the good people of Ghana, international partners that... Dr. Asari, Dr. Asari, Dr. Asari, Dr. Asari, Dr. Asari, for, for, forgive me for this interruption, but, but can you hear me out? Forgive me for this interruption. Yeah, I can hear you now. They are misleading their followers with issues that are non-existent. Is that the tone you want them to hear when you say they should come to well, a meeting? I, I, I was making the point that if they are misinforming their members about the problems. Well, we are saying we have resolved them. How do, you expect, how do you expect them to trust? How do you expect them to take your assurances when you say they are misinforming their followers and they are dealing with issues that are non-existent? And in fact, you organize a press conference, you organize a press conference, you organize a press conference, and you have a statement you have, you have, you have uh, as it were, read over and again, proof read, and allowed certain portions of that statement to be read publicly, where you tell the NDC to the face that in 2016, there were names of uh, plants and animals, is it, and pictures on the, on, the, on the register in the name of voters, and they didn't object. So they cannot object now when there are issues. I think, uh, Council, we were trying to make the point that even in the 2015 register, there were problems. There are more problems than what uh, we are talking about now. But the NDC didn't raise any serious issues then. And we think that the issues they are raising now, they are problems we have addressed. So Electoral Commission is saying that we have addressed. And we are inviting the discussion table. We can do so with all the political parties. Mm. But as I said earlier, all of us are in this election. We are interested in credible elections, and we know credible register is very, very sincere. So come discuss the table, let all of us look at it, so that all of us work. Don't it trust our way. What we are saying, come and see us, do the discussions that we have. And all of us will go home, be very, very satisfied that we are going into the election with a credible register. But, but, yeah, but are you, are you... satisfied that... Uh, the register for the election is very, right. very credible. But, but, but do we want MP sincerely the speaking, Dr. Botsman, sorry, are you proud to read a press statement to the whole of the public saying that these were the problems that the 2016 register was fraught with? And at the time, the NPP raised hell and you decided that you wouldn't listen to them. I stood with the NPP in that uh, demonstration. And I remember the NDC too. Sometimes, like they say in this country, you see where we are now. I was being said to be lawyer for the NPP people when I was not even their lawyer. I was just advocating for them. And some NDC people were attacking me at the time. Are you proud to say that these problems existed? NPP raised them. Because NDC didn't raise them, they should shut up. Mr. I, I was making this point. I was trying to paint a picture that when you do the exhibition, you on F, you uncover this problem. The essence of the exhibition is to identify. So in 2015, when those things were identified, the exhibition process was to correct that. 
I wasn't trying to make a case. Making the point that what we do here in Yoma, you are first problems of this nature. This is what they have uncovered, and this is what they have So that's the, so the fair point of it. I have basically read in a slide like one paragraph, when you read, when you read. It's to address this process, and then you can say, and you can read our list, that this problem can address. And that if you still have any doubt, let's come to the discussion table. For we want the party to be happy when it's the election that we are dealing with Mm. Okay. So, finally, you are unable to update them on their specific issues which they have disclosed to you, which you say you have resolved. You are unable to update them by way of the evidence for now. Mr. But, Mr. Yes. Let me make this clear. In that, in there was conclusion. They used to give us their hard drive, and they informed them that they were going to give us the, the problem they have, what they have identified. So that, and we told them, once you give it to us, within a week, we are going to call you back for a meeting. The meeting was held uh, a week from yesterday. Mm -hmm. So the plan was to meet them later, but within a week. And as I mentioned to you, when you finish the exhibition, there are certain legal processes. The, the what you read in Regulation 23. The magistrate is going through that process of just saying inclusion in that manner. And all these are names that must be input in the sector. Some of them must be removed. And the commission is working on that. And it's the reason why we are saying that uh, if the former president, a respected statesman, bring your party to the discussion table. Because NDC, Dr. Mane Buama, uh, who's a credible register, the EC, that's what we do for a living. Okay. And we have to make sure do everything to ensure we have that. So if you throw doubt, let's meet at the discussion table. The EC will show you all the evidence. The ones you still claim you have, bring them to us. Do, do you find that, uh, sorry, do you find that you can avert this demonstration and what it means for that day for, um, is it uh, economic activity, if you reached out and were a bit conciliatory, more conciliatory, and uh, decided that you don't breach any law, you don't breach any regulation. If you gave them evidence of what you say you have resolved, which is their, their reason for not submitting the further evidence they say they have of the other uh, infractions that they, they mentioned, I think we have done that. It's the main reason why in our first conference we must be clear that come to the discussion table. I think we have been very, very conciliatory because we, we think that it's in the end of Dr. Mane Buama, the NDC, the NPP, the Electoral Commission to live in a very peaceful country. So we, we've, we've sent the only bridge that please. So if the NDC calls says that they want to meet us on Monday, if the schedule permits, we are going to arrange a meet. Them. If they wanted to meet us on Tuesday, you know, with this, this will be done the nomination exercise. Okay. And we're anticipating that by next week, hopefully, we'll know those who are going through. So we have some activities lined up. Thank you. But in the interest of our peace, mm. our democracy, our development, if the NDC calls, they sent us a letter that, oh, okay, based on ABC and D, they want to meet the commission on Monday, on Tuesday, the commission will seriously look at it. Because a letter will not exist. Well, All right, Dr. 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 Bosman, thank you very much. Dr. Bosman Asari is um, the director, he's the direct deputy chairperson, deputy chairman, corporate services at the Electoral Commission. And uh, Dr. Mane Buama is director of elections and IT at the NDC. Uh, that's where we are. Uh, obviously, it's a deadlock. Uh, it doesn't look like uh, the two of them they are going to, to reason uh, where it has gotten to. Let's see, before uh, Tuesday, what happens, and after Tuesday, what happens. We'll be right back to ask if the president hears God or hears the people, if it is serious when we say <laughs> the voice of the people is the voice of God. We'll be right back.
this is the water that is coming from the pipe. In super oxy pipe move by any one. The mercy or two. And it's a lamb for the hour to go and see. Yeah, pipe. On your on your go to music or your pipe. I know you do that. On the pipe. Into why no one jiggle and say you two. One jiggle and say you two. Now we'll say a pipe. Now pipe and so you know. Okay, I do a few few more about. Scale mining who have invested millions of cities and millions of dollars who are mining responsibly, who are reclaiming the, 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 the landscape, who are contributing to our national economy, who are employing hundreds and thousands of Ghanaian youth who have committed no crime. So, if you announce a ban tomorrow, it means that you have. You, you have to look at the consequences on the national economy, which obviously will be catastrophic. You have a child who has hemorrhaging and needs critical uh, surgery that might be risky, might be painful and all of that. You're not going to wait beating about the booth and all of that. Mm. It is important for the president to know that you, in the month of August, if you have a BDT of 14,000 NTUs, and already you also have uh, climate change playing with us, and there's drought happening, if you are not careful, and you wait all this time pussyfooting around the challenges that are confronting us, and you don't act decisively, it might be too late, it might be irreversible. So it is important that that power, you see, because... The things that the minister said, the military police going, we are not too sure the conditions under which they are going in at. And that is what we've been doing so, since 2017. Mm. And we still are able to get the BDT at 14,000 NTUs in August. Okay. So it is urgent that we get that extra power. You know, in the UK, when they had the challenges with the route, they set up a special court. This, and people were taken to the court immediately and punishments were. And so because of the decisive way in which they handled it, they were able to nip this thing in the bud. But look at the way we are handling this thing. And how long have we been crying out over two weeks consistently? And we're not getting any response. We need to hear the president like we had him when, when we are in COVID. Okay. Where he was addressing, he is the commander in chief. He is the only one we voted for. He has executive president. You know, he, we have an executive president. The minister and all of that, they act for him on his behalf. But in the crisis, you want to hear your father. You and I must shine light on the Galamse menace. We must bring this issue to light, confront it with truth and justice. We must confront it. We can't pretend it is not happening. They, they, recently, they took samples of water in bottles. They had the before and the now. And when you look at the samples of the water we have, very soon, we won't even have water to drink. Because the galamse, it's the, 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 the mercury and the chemicals they use, they seep into the soil. They seep into the soil. And if we don't do something about it, very soon water that our parents could easily fetch and drink at the riverside will have to be important. Pure water. We will have to import pure water from overseas because if the water that will go into our um, how do they call it, uh, where they treat our water treatment plants, will be so saturated with chemicals because the chemicals to purify it will be so much that we can't even be able to drink. By the time you are drinking water that has been bottled in this country, you will be killing yourself. We must either keep quiet and sing together with the populace. Now, water is becoming very difficult to get. I mean, Ghana Water is saying that within the shortest possible time, they may not be able to produce water. The waterborne diseases that is up taking place at this mining area, see, it could be Pra or Brim or Ancobra or whatever. So my colleague church leaders, we are preparing the people for heaven. We are not preparing deaf people to heaven.
We must preach the truth like Jeremiah and Amos. We might be, people will hate us. They will fight us. They will not understand us. But that is what Desmond Tutu and the others did to liberate South Africa from apathy. What is happening now is more dangerous and deadly than apathy. And all church leaders, let us not just go on Sunday morning, preach wonderful sermons, and get applause of the people, take offerings and tithes, and come home and think all is well. It is our nation is being destroyed. We are heading towards a national doom. Right. So the last two voices you heard belong to Reverend Frim Paul Manson and Bishop Charles Ajinasari. The clergy have also stepped in very big. And you've had the uh, apostolic fathers, um, a good number of them, the respected men of God you have in the country, from Duncan Williams, Isuda Naba, Doug Ward Mills, uh, Ampia Kofi, uh, Godin Kese, um, mention them, mention them. So, this is where we are. But, this morning, the duty bearers are right here in the studio. The Minerals Commission's boss, Forestry Commission, Abu Jinapo will also be speaking to us, um, who is the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources. You have heard him already. He says, a good discussion to have. You say, we are not interested in more discussions. He says, let's continue the discussion. And that your request from the TUC, the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, all of you, I'm, I'm beginning to look for an organization or association in this country that has not yet issued a statement calling for one drastic measure or the other, particularly beginning with a declaration of a state of emergency halting the mining in any form. Just this morning, just got this from the Ghana Institute of Foresters. They have also issued a statement and they title it Halt Mining in Forest Reserves. So their target, like others, is to the new legislation that was passed in 2022 by which uh, the president, in the national interest, in the national interest, can allow persons uh, setting entities to mine in forest reserves. Right. So let me begin this discussion this way. The TUC, their statement had clear uh, demands, like the Ghana Medical Association and all the health associations that came together. Of course, all other statements you have seen, clear demands. The Catholic Bishops' Conference, the Apostolic Fathers, all of them, clear demands. But having heard from Martin A.C., the Minerals Commission boss, having heard from Abu Jinapo, it is obvious that the ban that is being sought will not be done. Let's find out from the TUC first how or what they say about that. Ken Chinibua Kudya, Vice Chairman, the Trace Union Congress joins us. Good morning and thanks for joining us, sir. I'm saying and good morning to our viewers and all our listeners. Right. So the government is very clear. There cannot be a ban on small scale mining. That's what you are asking for. There cannot be a ban on small scale mining. As we understand, we get over 50% of our foreign exchange earnings from mining. And small-scale mining contributes 40% of that. The minister says if you do that kind of ban, the economy will get into difficulty. He actually uses the expression uh, that the economy may get into bankruptcy. We are already a broke nation. So you are not getting your first demand, you and all the other civil society organizations. 
What do you say? Something. Uh, this comment is quite unfortunate. I think that it would have been more appropriate if government would have valued the other impacts in addition to the revenue loss that the country would, would lose. I mean, are we putting our, our lives and all the things at stake just on foreign exchange? Is that what the, the government is saying? When we have danger of Ghanaians losing their lives due to the chemicals being used, when we have the danger of not having water to drink, when the food that we are, we are eating are being polluted with these chemicals, I, mean, the, the, I, 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 I think this argument is, is, is far below the belt. The discussion should not be on revenue, um, exchange rate, or, or, or income. It should be on the lives of the people of Ghana. The money coming in is, is to manage the people. What will be the use when the money is in and we have a lot of burden? I mean, I, I think that argument for me is, is, is not right. Government must listen to the people. Lives are at stake. We don't get water to drink. Chemicals into the food we are eating are going to kill all of us. The forest reserves are being... So something, I think that this call is not right. Again, I hear people say that there are other, other companies that have license, and so they should be exempted. Look, why don't you halt everyone and do a holistic audit and find out those who have licenses and are operating without polluting the waters and are outside the forest reserves, why not? But you can't say that because of the foreign exchange or because others have licenses. We know of those, some having licenses, and yet polluting the same water and depleting the, the, the forest reserves. So TUC, or uh, let me say, Nice Labour, our call is very clear. In Akan or in Ghana, they said you, you don't you don't stand in tons and remove tons. I am Unjina in Kenya and to Kenya. You must halt everything and then come and see how we can make progress. And so our call is quite clear. And I want to assure the minister that come the date we have set, TUC will not back down on its call. We will do the, the needful. You have been called to a meeting. A meeting at which it is expected that there will be some resolution to this issue. Are you attending the meeting? You are supposed to send uh, 20 of your members. The forum is supposed to send 20 of its members. And also the, the, uh, this other group, the Federation of Labor, is supposed to spend, send 20 of its members to this meeting. This will be on Tuesday, the 17th, at 2 p.m. Will you be attending this meeting? Something. Obviously, we respect our minister and we attend. But unfortunately, hearing from the same government officials who are part of this committee, making this pronouncement, I mean, um, it takes away the shine of the meeting. If you have this posture before the meeting, what else I, I can to communicate to us at the meeting? And the minister must know that the reputation of this country is far important to some of us. Our president was appointed as one of the ambassadors to, to uphold the SDGs, uh, at least co-chair with the Norwegian Prime Minister in 2017. He was asked to co-chair the, the, the Prime Minister of, of, of Norway, to uphold the SDGs. Ghana has signed all the international treaties. SDG number 15 requires that we protect and promote sustainable use of, of uh, Africa. In fact, we have to halt reverse land de uh, declaration. We have to halt, go and read um, SDG Go, go 15. And our president is carrying this mandate 
to ensure that nationals, um, um, regional blocks, and global, globally, countries should uphold these things. And he doesn't see the need, at least, to uphold that office he has been, been honorably elected into. I am very clear in my conscience that nothing will stop organized labor from its demonstration and the cost of, of demonstration, the peace, the, the industrial peace, aviation will be affected, revenue will be affected. How do you, how do you value this one against your 40% revenue loss? I think the minister must, must go back again yeah, to, so, to the driver. So board. they are calling you to explain to you, uh, because we, I, and a, a, a number of my colleague journalists had the opportunity of being explained to uh, some of the difficult situations and part of which is what I just represented to you. So uh, you hear, for example, Mekuduka say that, just repeat to us the fact that in the year or near two years, when there was a ban on small scale mining, that was the year we had the most imports from small scale mining of gold. So it's no solution. What do you think? So I said, I, uh, I, the most, I the most with, export, with, with I, see, I mean, I, the most export of gold by, uh, by, through small-scale mining. That was the year we had the most export of gold by, through small-scale mining. So it's ineffective. So I, said, I, I don't want to even go to the angle where we can now, we have empirical records to trace how gold the, the, the small scale mining or the Galamsey gold are exported. That's a different argument. What we are saying is this go and check from, from GRE how much of this gold, um, that so called small scale gold and, or the Galamsey, are impacting on our on, on, on GRE uh, records. We are very clear in our, in our mind that the president must do the needful, he must halt it. We'll go for the discussion, but we're not there to be convinced the question, the about question I the, asked you, the, the question I ask you is, perhaps you don't have the information. So the point is, in those two years when there was a ban, that was when you have the most export of gold through small-scale mining. So it was ineffective. In those years when you threw Operation Vanguard, Operation Halt 1, 2, Op Operation Galam Stop, and you deploy the military into the forest and into Galamsey sites, what is the effect? So these are ineffective. You should find some other means rather than asking for another complete ban. So I'm saying the, the issue at stake now is different. What you outline is on the, on the revenue part of, of, of the, 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 the mining. And this juncture is about water to drink. It's about the chemicals entering the food we are eating. It's about you and I carrying water from Accra to our children in Cape Coast, in Tapradi, who are schooling. If you are a millionaire, or I don't know how much you earn, how, how, much can you, how often can you travel from Accra to Cape Coast and Tapradi to give water to your child who is in school? So the issue I take today is different from what it was you've applied. We don't want to even focus on the on the revenue, which seems to be the, the main, main if discussion. You are, if, you are, about... if you are this clear in your mind, we have heard yes. some of your members on various platforms insist that there's no point attending this meeting, which is asking the Trace Union Congress to bring 20 members, the Forum to bring 20 members, and the Ghana Federation of Labor to bring 10 members. There's no point attending this meeting. So why are you attending the meeting? If you will not listen to Something. the explanations they have. Having, having heard the minister and, and the government officials today, I didn't feel discouraged about it, about, about this meeting. I thought we're coming there to know what we can all do to make progress. But if this is a, this what I'm hearing this morning, are there things coming to be discussed at the at the at the at the meeting, then I'm sure we will we'll even work out. We don't want government to think that 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 having a, a, a committee or a task force or, or engaging us in a meeting is the way forward. The way forward is for the president to 
to, de to declare the state of the emergency and halt all legal or illegal. Halt everyone. Now let's see those who are doing responsible mining and let's allow them to continue. Those who are not, then we, we stop them and allow the water for this to settle down the forest. Let's go on that tangent. Mm. Okay. We must halt everybody. Okay. Ken Chinibua Kodia is the vice chairman of the Trace Union Congress. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, my next stop is a quick interaction with Professor Dr. Paul Poku Sampene Osei, senior lecturer and professor in forensics, histopathology, histopathology, KNUSD School of Medicine and Dentistry, histopathologist, Kuma, uh, Konfanochi Teaching Hospital, Kumasi, Ghana. If you have taken your time to watch Erastos Asaridonko's uh, Poison for Gold, that Joy News documentary, you will see him there. He's the one a while ago you watched who was talking about the deformed uh, babies. In that documentary, <laughs> Poison for Gold, you saw the babies without genitals with six fingers, six toes, and malformed head. What is the cause? Heavy concentration of lead and mercury found in the baby and the placenta. The extreme deformation is confirmed in other babies in areas where Galamse is going on. Their mothers are coming into contact with contaminated soil or polluted waters, including simply inhaling the poison like vaporized mercury. These toxic met metals, mercury, lead, and arsenic, now abound in the once safe water bodies where you could simply drink the water without it being treated. Professor Sampini, thank you very much for your time. Prof, unmute your mic. Sorry about that. Great. We can hear you clearly now. And yeah. thank you very much for what you do for Mother Ghana, for God and country. Because eight months ago, we got the empirical evidence of what is actually going on as far as the other effects of Galamse are concerned. And you say this borders on generational extinction. Please explain. Yeah, thank you so much, um, Samson, and thank you <clears throat> for having me. Um, let me say good morning to your cherished uh, listeners and viewers. And also, let me um, state here that uh, I'm almost very much appreciative of what a multimedia uh, group of company is doing. Um, when this issue came up, they were the first to contact me and then, as it were, uh, help in letting the, the populace know the extent to which uh, this uh, irresponsible mining, I don't this time want to even call it Galamse again, or small scale mining, or they are all in the same soup. So I call them irresponsible mining. Irresponsible in the sense that um, most of the activities actually allow these um, heavy metals, which, who are, which are very much uh, incompatible with life into our water bodies. They allow them into our soil. And now the effect is also being seen in humans. And so therefore, uh, I see it as irresponsible. And therefore, we have to be mindful of that and actually, um, what do we call it, uh, work against that. What, what brings you to the conclusion that this is a generational extension? That's why it bothers on. What brings you to that conclusion? Well, uh, yeah, it's true. Um, um, most of these things, like the heavy metals that are being inhaled, that are being ingested, and that are being um, having to have their way to our bloodstream, uh, cause what we call irreversible damages, irreversible um, issues to the body. And these things, when they go in, they can pass on to um, others, especially if you uh, inhale air that is polluted with all these heavy metals. 
In fact, uh, what is going to happen is that mothers are going to continually be I mean, giving birth to these children with all manner of deformities. And so um, these children, even though some of them may exist, or some of them may, for some reason, have the, the opportunity to live, but what sort of life are they living? They will live in lives that are very uncomfortable, life that is not actually um, meant to be lived. And so, therefore, um, what is happening is that very soon we will see human beings walking, but the person is not as is not a whole human being, but rather partial human being. That is half a human being because the brain might be might have been affected, the kidneys are affected, the liver is affected. Um, well, the brain is, like I said, is affected, the liver affected, the kidneys are affected, and in fact, all other reproductive organs, especially if you are a man, your sperms would have been affected because these heavy metals find their way also into the, the very thing that causes uh, us to even continue to reproduce. And then the women also have their gonads, I'm talking about the ovaries, and then their reproductive organs are also going to be affected. So naturally, we are going to see. People, if want, this to people want to know. People want to know. People want to know how extensive your research has been. Uh, we are watching the deformed babies that you have uh, preserved in formalin in the laboratory at the KNUST. Um, uh, the placentas that you have used to to confirm empirically that mining areas. This is what is happening to the pregnant women and other people. How extensive is this research to be used to um, generalize in the manner being done? Well, uh, um, Samson, once again, thank you. I mean, the, the research is quite extensive in the sense that uh, I have been able to cover about five regions where this uh, illegal mining is, is being done with all its seriousness, Western region, Western or Central region, Eastern region, and Ashanti region. And I believe that I understand that in now is being done in upper, the, the northern part of Ghana too. Of course, I've not been there. And so if Ghana is made of 10 regions and I've been able to, I mean, um, occupy half or been able to do half of the regions where these heavy, um, illegal mining or responsible mining is being done, then I think it's quite extensive, especially if you look at the numbers, uh, the, the number of placentas and the babies that have been able to get from them. And then, uh, in fact, uh, the very one that you saw is not the only pe the only baby that I have. I have some of them also, uh, which of course I have to convince uh, the, the affected family members to take samples of these um, deformed babies for teaching purposes and also for further tests to be done in almost all the organs because uh, some of them um, you we did internal organs but if you look at even the head the neighbor all of them are affected and so therefore i believe that is quite extensive and of course it's a research and i will actually ask anybody who is also interested to pick other part of the research work and also go about it and mm. then and see what can be done about that. So right. for me, I think it's quite extensive. So this, this was uh, revealed uh, almost a year now. Uh, we understand that you have done extra work most recently. What does it reveal? Well, the extra work, uh, like you rightly asked me, well, how extensive? The extra work that I've been doing of late is that I have added some water bodies. And the water bodies um, that I did were also about the same five regions, to be precise. Um, and these five regions, I picked some water bodies from this Galamse site, right up to about 3.5 kilometers away from the Galamse site. Mm. And the values that I had in terms of the heavy metal suspension in the water bodies are quite alarming. And so um, the work is all still ongoing. In fact, I'm still doing some work on placentas. Like I said, it's difficult sometimes Ghana to understand and then to appreciate why people sometimes don't want to give things, for instance, these placentas that are being sent into the incinerators to be burnt, and you ask for it, and it's a, it's a problem. Mm. And so for some reason, those mothers who have passed on, in fact, those ones, um, because I have the every right to continue with the diagnosis 
I can sometimes take some of these placentas and, and be able to have a look at them. And so um, these placentas that I've done, which amounted to about maybe 50 or 70, yeah, 70 placentas, they are still showing these heavy metals. Some of them are having what we call fibrosis and then inflammatory processes going through the placenta while the baby is also in there. And so it's not something that we as Ghanaians should sit down and just look on, fold our arms and look on. There should be something done to actually avoid it. We shouldn't only be looking at the money that we'll get and then, I mean, look at what the, 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 the profits that Ghana government seems to be getting and then to the detriment of the, the, the humans that are going to use the very, uh, the very finances that the government is get, getting uh, to, 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 as it were, destroy us. So this new research has not, does not reveal any changes or any improvement since the last uh, one? No, 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 no. It's rather worse than it. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. The values are getting worse. Um, and then, uh, in fact, the water bodies, once I did a, a, some survey on the water bodies, the values were quite in, you know, significant, but not as, as hard or as uh, big as I've seen of late. So the, the condition is not, is not changing. The situation is not changing at all. Mm. How do you go about this? It must involve a lot of money. How do you do it? Oh, uh, I do it all by myself. In fact, as a, as a, as a lecturer, um, it's part of our mandate that uh, you, you, you research and then also contribute to society by giving your research findings out and so on and so forth. So it's nothing but the, 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 vice, president of the, the, the vice president of the Ghana Medical Association, Professor Dr. Anis York, was in the studio last week and they were very happy about the work that you have done. Uh, I would presume that the health ministry is working with you, at least after your, the, the publication of the first one through uh, the Joy News documentary. Not at all, not at all, not at all. At a point, they were castigating me for the work that I was doing. I mean, some quarters, they were saying that what I was doing uh, was more or less like photoshopping or some sort of. So, they were not into I mean, the least and twos about what I was doing. So the ministry has not actually uh, contacted me. Neither uh, even the GMA didn't contact me. Um, they were not so much in twos about what I was doing until the issue came. At, I mean, came and look, I mean to look at them in the sense that when you go at the um, of our health facilities. You realize that the issues of kidney diseases, um, liver diseases, GIT diseases are now in, on the increase. And so, therefore, they have come to realize that what I was saying was not just a fluke, but something that was getting to uh, an alarming proportion. And I believe that now they have understood and probably maybe in the near future will contact me and find out what and how I, I, I did what I've done. Um, what, what led to this, your research? And how do you think the state can leverage on it to get to know much more about what is going on to assist in the solutions going forward? Well, um, the, the motivation, like I've said, is the fact that one, I'm a lecturer, and two, uh, my work also, as it were, uh, asks me to involve myself a lot in into research. Your work as a pathologist? As a pathologist, not only as a pathologist, but all lecturers in Ghana are actually asked to do some form of research mm. and do publications. And the publication should not be any publication, but um, high esteemed um, um, what you peer journal, review journals. So it's very important that you do those, those research. You, you are Two, a forensic, you are a forensic pathologist. How many of yeah. how many of your 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 class do we have in Ghana? Class as in how many of you? How many of you do we have in Ghana? No, as 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 that one, as far as I know, I think I'm the only person. Um, we have other pathologists who as who also do autopsies and all those things. But if it is something that is trained and certified, then I think I so far 
maybe I'll, I'm the only person. Okay. So yeah. I, was, I was asking, yeah. what, what extent of state collaboration do you feel is necessary, if at all, and what can that do for us in, in the Galamse fight? One, I think that the, the, the governments um, should actually help in um, setting up some research fund. I know that the government is doing something well, um, something good in terms of uh, funding research. Uh, they should fund research, and then the findings of the research must be used or be put into practice. They should also allow individuals who also are interested in funding research, especially research of this nature, um, must be funded. Uh, let me also state that, that uh, um, Mr. Sam Jonah, Dr. Sam Jonah, is that Dr. Sam Jonah says Sam Jonah, um, at a point uh, had also come in to assist in um, the research of, into um, these heavy metals and its uh, debilitating effect. And so I would wish that other, other institutions individually and then the government especially should be able to fund the research so that uh, some of these things Will be will be will be will be resolved or will be solved. Mm. You see something. Let me add that some of these things, like the government may 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 stop, or let's say the responsible mining may be halted. But the effect in the water bodies. People are talking about turbidities in the water bodies, not the turbidity that is the problem. The suspended heavy metals that cannot be seen. These suspended heavy metals can never be sedimented. And so, therefore, we can stop this heavy metal, um, pollution of the water bodies by looking at only the turbidity. That is not the issue. The issue goes beyond turbidity. And the heavy metals are the ones that are causing the problem. What well, the air pollution. Now, everybody, we, are, we are breathing air anywhere, any, at any time you travel from one place to the other. How pure is the, the air that you are breathing in? And I've said that. The manner by which these heavy metals can get into our body is even by inhalation. Mm. Which, of course, you cannot say that you go to any place and, and carry your own oxygen. Okay. Inhalation mm. is one, feeding is one, and then um, what do we call it? For some reason, um, having to interact with people around wherever you find yourself, right. especially greetings, like I said, that. Even the neighbor can also contain some of these uh, heavy metals. So it's not an easy thing. And I believe that the government should see the sense in whatever the pressure groups, especially the TUC, GMA, UTAG, and all those things are saying. And then come to a conclusion or come to some form of agreement. We are not saying that they should ban mining completely. No, we are saying that they should halt it and then do reassessment of the situation and see. Mm. where we are getting it wrong and then prove, improve upon where we are getting it wrong and then the rest who can actually mine responsibly right. do so and then everybody will stay, I mean, in peace and everybody will stay in health. Pro Professor Sir Sampini, thank you very much. But uh, I'd like you to share maybe very finally on this f with me. The, the Ghana Water Company in the central region, for example, they, they I, I believe the statement they issued um, some two weeks ago is what brought the next heightened um, fight where they said that, and I interviewed them uh, last week, where we're told that their machine for water treatment was originally meant to treat water at 200 turbidity, MTU. It got to a point they had to give themselves an average of 2,000 turbidity as treatable. But today, they are having to treat 14,000 turbidity. In fact, they cannot treat, is it about 60% of the water or more? They used to treat with alum. We have also seen other women who are involved in the making of a cheque and the rest, they go to the water sources, they fetch water. The water is murky. Then they put the alum in the gallon of water or barrel of water and wait for, you know, the sedimentation to happen and then they fetch it to use to, 
do the food for all of us to buy and eat. Now we understand they are using polymer, which they say cost four times the price of alum. The question I ask you is, what do you know about any adverse effects as we increase the chemicals that we need to treat the water? In fact, we understand that tap water would have been the safest because even as you put the water, you bottle them up, you are, you are endangering that water even a lot more. Are there any dangers in the advanced chemicals that we are using to treat now? Yeah, uh, Samson, it's, you know, it's not for a fluke that, um, let's say, the World Health Organization, EPA, and then uh, the, the health institutions around um, say that chemicals can be used, but at certain concentrations. And so those concentrations, when measured, is seen to be compatible, that uh, uh, even though some of them may be hazardous, in, in, to some extent, when it's, it gets ingested into the body, can easily be eliminated. And so therefore, the elimination is very, very important. But at certain concentrations, it becomes toxic. All chemicals, there's no chemical, not even drugs, that cannot actually uh, be used at concentrations where the system, especially the liver and the kidney, uh, to the point that the kidneys on the liver cannot actually excrete it or eliminate it. And so if they are saying that they are using all these chemicals the largest or the highest of its concentration to be able to get some clean water, which of course I believe is not even clean at all, because uh, if you can only segment um, soil and then forgetting of the suspended heavy metals, mercury, can you suspend, uh, can you sediment mercury? No. Can you sediment um, lead? No. You can't sediment. Um, any of these heavy metals, and even if it can be segmented, it's going to be very difficult to be, I mean, to be done. And so, therefore, if you are able to settle soil, clay, and you get something that looks like you've gotten clean water, or some color water that is a bit clear for you to drink, and that you continue to add more chemicals, you should look at the liver. The liver is the largest organ in the body, and the, one of the functions of the liver is what I've already stated, elimination of chemical waste. And all manner of waste is done by the, the, the liver. The kidney will be the end where these chemicals that are toxic are excreted. And so when they are overwhelmed with chemicals, then the functions will be, will be reduced. And when they are reduced, what they do is that they go into what we call compensatory mechanism. And that compensatory mechanism means that they are going to produce a lot more cells, which are detrimental, a lot more cells. We don't need those more cells or this. And so they will then go into falling into what we call stem cells or residual cells in the liver and the kidney. And these residual cells in the liver and the kidney, they are supposed to be used at extreme cases. And these are now we are using it now. So what is going to happen? We're going to probably have large number of people coming with kidney diseases as a result of all these things that the, the water water company is doing and they're going to have large number of uh, people having to suffer from uh, liver diseases not even the man who is the, whoever is sitting in the member okay. of the panel mm. all of them are at risk mm. the planning the mineral commission director the forest direct whoever is there Okay. They shouldn't think that we are dealing with something that is so easy, mm. something that is so simple. When it gets to humans, I'm telling you, my brother, it's irreversible. All right. And those who attempt doing some, let me just say something. Mm. There are some people that I came across who are doing legal mining, so to speak, um, small scale license mining. And they have been coming to Confanochi with kidney diseases. Yeah, we have had doctors. Seventy percent uh, of them come to. We have had doctors at Confanochi and elsewhere in the mining areas confirm uh, the kidney diseases, the increase in kidney uh, cases, and also other uh, bizarre 
you know, diseases that they are beginning to find. Thank you so very much, uh, Professor. Professor Dr. Paul Puku Sampene Osei, uh, Senior Lecturer and, prof and Professor in Forensics Histopathology, KNUST School of Medicine and D Dentistry. Thank you very much. He's also um, Histopathologist, Konfanochi Teaching Hospital, Kumasi. Now, let me get to the studio to deal with the duty bearers we have right here. And I'll start with a direct question for the two of you, gentlemen, and ask for a direct quick response. We'll take a break and return to give you the time to explain matters to us. I'm referring in the studio to John Alote, Chief Executive, Forestry Commission, Martin Kwekwe AC, who is Chief Executive, Minerals Commission. We will also be talking to Professor Gladys Nyakoansa, Associate Professor and Co-Principal Investigator of the University of York, UK, UG, as University of Ghana Galamse Project. So, the various associations, unions, well-meaning from all walks of life in this country, they seem to be unanimous that the first step is a declaration of a state of emergency in very simple language, just halt all forms of small-scale mining for now. Will that happen, Janaluti? Why should that not happen? Um, something, uh, thank you and then um, greetings to your cherished listeners and uh, viewers. And then um, we also appreciate the heightened interest and concerns and recommendations made by various uh, interest uh, groups. Uh, we also note the interventions from the government side relating to the RESEC and the ad hoc uh, committee. Something um, I will start by looking at probably why people on the, uh, do Galamse, why they undertake that activity. Mm. Um, and we'll, then we'll come to that. Yes. But I want well, that will help me to be able to yes. address you, that question. You make the point and then yes. you'll come to explain. There will yes. be all the time for you to explain. My point, my, my point simply is that the, um, the um, minister has called for engagement. And I think that um, the uh, various groups uh, have come out with recommendations and then uh, what they think should be done. I think it's proper um, the minister and the groups sit down and then they put forth their uh, recommendations and then we are able to look at it and come out with it. They are straightforward. Uh, forward. Yes. They are straightforward. Yes. Where there is the meeting of minds from the, whoever has issued a statement, is halt, pause the process for now. All mining, legal or illegal, stop it for now. Yeah, but that doesn't stop uh, you know, uh, the engagement process. It's important uh, we engage. Even if you are strong on your point, you still will have to engage. Should that happen? That should happen. Should the halting happen? The engagement should happen. But how about the halting? It will come out after the engagement. Do you think we need more engagements? Yes, we need, an, we need engagement. All of them are clear in their minds that the way forward is first stop. It wouldn't take anything away to have a constructive engagement. You will not advise that it is halted? I will advise that there is uh, an, an engagement uh, prior to any decision. You make me feel that I'm doing process of nation in the courtroom. Say, <laughs> <laughs> see, we've heard you on this. Have you had a change of mind? No. Good Not at all? Good morning. Good morning mm. uh, to everyone. Samson, uh, I'll be very blunt. The government has come out clearly on that. You heard my minister. He said Jose Ban is totally out of the question. Uh, yesterday, he even went a step further and said it will affect the economy. Uh, he's not making apologies for, I will always say, the middle look alike, what a body we see. 
was I consulted? Yes. Uh, the minister will not make any decision regarding mining without speaking to the Minerals Commission. So even ahead of his coming, I had even made it somewhere, I think on Metro, that wholesale ban will not solve the problem. Uh, I'll catalog a lot of maybe reasons for that when we come back. But then uh, my colleague here was talking about engagement, something again, you know, humility and respect. I have read the statement of, of, of the organized groups. Let me use that simple term to put all of them together. When I go through them, I realize that there are a few things that they need to understand. I mean, the argument that the water bodies are not clear, it's not the best existential threat, whatever they want to call it, that one, nobody is contesting that because it's out there for everyone to see. I don't live in space. But then when you go to their statement, you realize that there are a few things that we need to, you know, we want to let them understand. So the engagement is very, very important. Do you subscribe to the minister when he says the economy will be in trouble? Yes. If it is halted? Yes. By the data from the Bank of Ghana, total gold export between January and April 2024 amounted to $2.17 billion dollars representing 38.5% of total export earnings within that period. Is small-scale mining accounted for half of this? We are talking about just over $1 billion in four months. If you net out direct cost and the cost of environmental havoc, as well as health havoc, the net effect will be negative. You don't agree? Uh, something. I even have <laughs> a more latest figure, you know. As at June 30th, the small scale is $2.2 billion. But at this stage, we are not talking about figures. You see, when I listened to the professor, I think the earlier speaker, what's the name? Shinibu Akodia. You can see that the argument, you know, their, their response in response to the minister's uh, uh, statement yesterday, they were just looking at the revenue. You see, that's why this call for engagement is very important. They're just looking at revenue. But you see, there are two other issues that you have to look at. For example, people are shocked to know or hear that there are several thousands who are doing the underground. So you go to a place like Takwa. You go to a place where my minister comes from, the so-called New Frontier, Dakrupe, Tinga, they have licenses. So as far back as the time of Asuma Chairman, I was there when licenses were given. I was then a deputy CEO. Licenses were given to miners in Dakupe and Tinga. They go underground. These are persons who are plying their trade that have nothing to do with the water body. They have nothing to do with the water body. So when you say respectfully that folks in Tinga, Dakupe, Takwa should not work, uh, we have, we, you know, we are uncomfortable with that because they are not responsible for the kind of thing. They should not work see. for four months. Well, but, but some, by, doing, people, by people, doing so, something, just you, lose, you lose two billion. No. You say that's not worth no, it. No, don't just look at revenue to government. You also have to look at jobs. And people in Takwa, Dakupe, and Tinga have gone for loans. They've taken loans, they've taken millions of dollars to sink these shafts that are operating in a way that have nothing to do with taking the effluent or whatever waste into the Praia and Cobra or Tunnel. I mean, these guys are there, and they are not just one or two people. There are several thousands. So you also need to listen to them and hear them out. You understand? You need right. to listen to them because you go to Tinga, you don't have anything like Pra or, or even some parts of the Upper East. I just got a report from the Burger Officer of the Minerals Commission, and then I've realized that He's indicated that if you go to Fumbisi and that's Busan North and Bufa South, there's an area called Kandema. They started some kind of illegality. And when I saw the pictures, it was purely underground. So I've asked him, move quickly. Let's formalize them. Let's give them good catcher as an alternative to the use of mercury. I mean, these are the kind of things we're talking about. So, yes, the anger is there. We'll I don't explain leave the space. difference between we'll explain. the use we'll explain. of mercury we'll and we'll gold catcher. Yeah, we'll, we'll, explain. Shortly. we'll explain all that. But, but, but you, you were talking about licenses, and the question that is coming up is that when we check from your, <clears throat> your rep, repository, 
we see that between 2017 to 2024, there have been 1,500 plus mining licenses issued. <clears throat> as against 2009 to 2016, when there were 55 mining licenses issued. Between August and now, when we have started this discussion alone, you have granted as many as 30 plus. Don't you feel you should halt and pause, especially in this time? Uh, something again, let me explain that. One, some of them are renewals. And there's, you know, there are small scale operations that have existed for 20, 30 years, and they are working quietly. Okay, so some of them are renewals. You must understand that that's number one. Number two, this is an activity that was taking place in five regions Ashanti, Central, Eastern, Western, which included Western North. You understand that? And then Upper is where you come from. Uh, technology has made it possible for us to find gold in other parts of the country. So we are now seeing small-scale operations in 12, 13 regions. So numbers have gone up. That's why the licenses are also going up. But then the answer is rather the reverse. You don't issue the licenses, they go into the water body. They will go into the forest. They will go and do it illegally. Because I remember very well that the complaints of the small-scale miners is that we don't have licenses. We, we want licenses to go and work lawfully. I mean, there are several you know, thousands of Ghanaians out there who wants license to go and work and live in peace. So numbers, or the numbers you are seeing from our, our repository is not synonymous with illegal mining. The, the, the conversation has been that it is the breach of these licenses that has brought us where we are. Right, uh, uh, Samson, when we say breach, again, people speak generally. We have, even the last case, people, occasionally there are breaches. That's why we have inspectors and minerals commission to check them. What is the issue at stake? What are we discussing? We are seeing Pra, Tano, and Cobra, Brim and Co. looking like Milo. What is responsible for that? People mount, mount platforms, various devices in the water proper, so called, and then try to dredge. Whatever language you want to use, you know, scoop and, and do that kind of thing. That's one. These are people who don't have licenses. The minister or minerals commission will not re re recommend the grant of a license to somebody to enter the water body, mount a platform or whatever device, and do that kind of activity. So that is illegal. Mm. That is one of the causes. The other one has to do with persons who are perhaps within the bank or perhaps upstream, okay, because they don't have modern equipment. We are not supposed to do hundred meters from yes. the water bodies. Yes, so they also, you know, dig the oil and then wash into the water body. So we, we have to be careful we don't lose focus in our discussion. It has nothing to do with the guy in the Akrupe or Tinga who has sunk a shaft and is going down, bring the oil body up and process it on site. Over a period and, and now. Hang on, and it's properly regulated. Mm. So for the Tinga guy, the several thousands in Dakupe and Takwa, when you say everybody put your tools down, they will have a problem with you because they are not responsible for the kind of mess you and I agree is annoying everybody. They should not be punished for the sins of the others. That is it. And then when I made this right. my, my, my statement, right. then... Right. The, the, the question is, the, as you say, that is overgeneralized. But many come to the conclusion, including journalists who are visiting these so-called license mining places and finding that it is the breach of the laws by the same people who have these licenses that is leading us to this problem. So that over this period, you say you, you felt that the community mining was the way to go. So you have given out uh, 24 uh, of such licenses to community mining, but in the heat of this discussion, where everybody is asking you to halt. Just two days ago, you went and commissioned another of this uh, community mining. That, does it show that you are being responsive? Uh, something, let me, let me clarify this. Again, uh, community mining is one of the several ways to go. Uh, we've seen cases, I mean, several of them, where they come and tell us, oh, uh, in, in fact, some people have been used the term glorify galamsey. Mm -hmm. So it's brought to our attention, this is community mining. You go and investigate, people have just mounted uh, 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 some signboard and put there, let's say, rara community mining. 
and they are doing their own thing. There are several of them fraudulent. Oh, yes, and they are not licensed. So when you drive by and you see Rara committing mining, there's no gold in Rara yet. You know, we found something, but we are not mining. I'm just using that as an example. That's where I come from, okay? Or I see community mining. Uh, these things are brought to our attention. You just drive by, maybe to Konongo or somewhere, and then the journalists will pick it or some people will take a shot and say, yes, this is, this is what we are talking about, glorify community mining. We send our inspectors there, we go and check, we realize that they have no license at all. People are doing that. And then these things are reported to the assembly or the security agency. So it's important we put it there. It will be foolhardy on my part mm -hmm. to sit here and even tell you that even the likes of Newmont or Goldfields, everything is 100%. Okay, I was going to there, get there, Yes, there, there are some. Of course, that's why we have inspectors. We go there and correct them. Mm -hmm. And in, in instances, shut them down. Mm -hmm. There was a case recently where my attention was drawn to the fact that there's a community mining you know, in the forest. And then clearly, I know that we don't grant licenses for small scale in the forest, like the minister said. We went there. It was an illegal operation. So I get it. People are angry. I don't live in space. We live here. We dream, you know. But then, in our anger, let us not be carried away by emotions and then go and touch persons. It's not emotions, so we are seeing our water. I understand that. We, we, we are, no, we are but, being but, told but, of all but the something, dangers. But something. The, but, but some babies are there. Uh, we are consuming food. We are something, told something, are con it's something. contaminated. No, no the water company is telling us that we, we needed 2,000 uh, turbidity level to treat water. At this time, it is 14,000 turbidity. Something. No apologies. Uh -huh. Nothing practically grows in Accra. I like fufu a lot. I ask myself, do I know where the cassava? I eat Accrante practically every day. And all these foodstuffs that we buy. They are coming from some of these areas. Mm. You so understand it's, that? It's, it's so, so, so we understand that. But you see, when we also respectfully get carried away, and then somebody, several of them. So you see, when the argument was being made on the revenue alone, I had a little bit of, I became a bit uncomfortable. So when the government says, let's engage for you to understand some of the issues. That is not to say that we are not prepared to deal with the problem. So, because so just see, hold on, I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. And uh, when I return from the break, many of my viewers want you to answer the simple question. Yes. If you are in charge issuing licenses and making sure that the one who is doing the wrong thing you have just spoken about is, does not do that wrong, and this is what we are seeing, should you keep your office? Now to, to Ms. Alote, mm -hmm. the question that is popping up predominantly for you is that where did we go wrong that in the midst of all this trouble, you allow the LI 2460 something, is it, to be passed for forest reserves to be mined? And immediately it was passed in 2022, November, correct? How many people have gotten the license to mine in the forest? And a good number of them have been associated, the companies, the owners of the companies have been associated with the MPP. Why did you allow that? Many are asking that that law should be reversed, that it's one of the biggest problems. What do you say? Yeah, something I think that for most of the people who are commenting on this uh, particular ally, uh, the area that they talk about is the uh, Section 3 1, the prohibited areas, um, which states clearly that a person shall not issue a license or permit to any person to undertake mining activity, including exploration activity in the following areas the uh, globally significant biodiversity area, the protected provenance areas, and at least a host of them. Um, then the, uh, the two, uh, then gives a key where the president may subject to the Article 268 of the Constitution give approval in writing to a mining company to undertake mining activity in the globally significant biodiversity area in the national interest. So the LI states clearly the areas that um, are prohibited you know, so far as mining in forest reserves are concerned. I think it's the case where people are talking about the area where the president may uh, allow that in the national interest. Mm. 
So is it that we don't uh, trust that the present decision may be based on the national interest? Uh, people have been asking. So, why, so why, why, that, why, is, that people is, want to know what the so national for interest me, is. The national interest will be rest with the president. The wound to me so, and all those people, those. Uh, I'm saying that the national the interest that is stated here mm -hmm. is the president okay. to take that decision. Right. Not the Forestry Commission. What the Forest Commission is um, happy about is that all these areas, the uh, hill sanctuary, the high conservation value areas, have been excluded, except for national interest, which will be determined by the president in. Uh, writing. Um, so that is my take on it. If you ask me about the, uh, the, 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 the majority of Ghanaians, yes. either represented in the TUC and all these other organizations, the Catholic bishops, the you know, Apostolic Fathers, all of them, them. again, they are clear that this new law allowing people to mine in the forest reserve is bad. It should go. I think the Ghana Academy of uh, Sciences, Arts and Sciences, are also clear about that particular uh, law, that it should be reversed as the man in charge of this subsector. What's your view on that? Yeah, so far as the Forestry Commission is concerned, um, they ask, we have not issued any permit relating to uh, Globally significant biodiversity area. Um, what I know, the only one I know is the uh, Etiwa where there is some, uh, you know, pre-mining activities in terms of exploration. Otherwise, there has not been any permit issued to any company to uh, mine in this, those areas that have been mentioned, uh, as far as the Forest Commission is concerned. Oh, are, are we? on different wavelengths. I'm referring to this ally at the back of which the fourth estate yeah. has done a documentary yeah. highlighting the licenses that have been issued since this law was passed in November 2022. Uh, That's what I'm referring to. And you say the power it gives, it gives to the president in the national interest to give people the concessions in the forest reserve. That's what I'm referring to. Yeah, but something, Forestry Commission doesn't issue licenses. It's only when the person applies for a forest entry permit, mm -hmm. uh, then he attach the, uh, or enclose the, uh, the, uh, the mining lease, and then the EP and other documents that are required. That is the point where we we'll consider the uh, application. And okay. as I speak, we have not issued any a permit in uh, those areas that have been mentioned. Okay, let me go to Prof for just about a minute or two, then we take a break. Uh, uh, Prof, thanks once again for joining us. Good morning. Hello, Prof. Hello. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning, Samson. Right. Um, also, just briefly, I want to take a break and return, but briefly, I want to hear from you. What do you make of the government's response to, to Ghanaians in general, including the UTAG, which you are a member of? UTAG nationwide also is saying there should be an immediate halt uh, for a certain time to allow the water some space to heal and then we reorganize properly. What do you say about government's response to that? That that's not the way to go. Okay, thank you. My first response is that it is better to be broke and healthy than to be rich and dead or sick. That is my very first response. I'll say it again. It is better to be broke and healthy than to be rich and dead or sickly. My main response to the government is that he should show leadership in this matter. Leadership is not for the same hearted. In my small position as a parent, if you cannot be tough, if you are not committed to doing what is right. You cannot show leadership even in your own home. Your children will 
I, I don't think you know the best word to use to describe this. Just imagine a child mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. likes to have his way to do the wrong thing. So your child comes and says he wants to leave the tap open to flood the entire house. You know that if that happens, there could be electrocution. There could be a loss of property. And, and, and there could be accidents. People could slip and fall and break their heads and so on and so forth. But the child says, if you don't allow me, I'll throw myself on the floor, I'll roll, I'll scream, I'll shout, throw tantrums. And as a parent, you say, well, because I don't want my child to throw tantrums, I'll allow him to go ahead. That is what I'm hearing from the discussions so far, that because people have concessions, because people have invested in an activity that is threatening to wipe everybody off the face of this country called Ghana, we should allow it to happen. For me, that is not the way to go. They haven't said you should allow it to happen. That don't let those who are doing the right things suffer for the sins of those who are doing the wrong. Is that not fair? Something, who, who, who is doing the right thing? Excellent. Who is doing the right thing? When you go to the mining site and you talk to people, you, you speak with people, people have concessions. They are not so small scale. There are rules and regulations, how you should do it, how you should reclaim the land. They are not doing that. They release their concessions to people. And they don't do the mining. They give it to uh, illegal miners and, and collect fees from them. This is what we get from the, the field. When you go to the field and talk to the people who are in the pit, the pits don't belong to them. They belong to people who are in positions to buy chamfans and positions to buy excavators and so on and so forth. And they leave the land to them. So they have um, permission to mine responsibly. But they check that responsibility probably in order to maximize profit and allow wrongdoing to go on. We are not saying, you talk and all the other people are not saying, ban mining forever. That's not what we are saying. Okay. But we are saying at this rate, let us put a stop and rethink, relook really at the things we need to you see. We have been taught something between you and I, we've been going this path for at least the past three years. Mm. And things are getting even worse. How can we continue to do the same things and expect different results? Yes, it so that's the point, Prof. You are asking for the same things to be done. Yeah, there, 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 there was a ban. So, there was a ban. It didn't yield any results. And here we are. You be, say we be, should go back no, to the because, ban. There was the deployment of the ban, military and the police. You say we should go back it. to that same thing. Yes. No, the, the ban was an artificial ban. Hmm. It was an artificial ban. Last week, when I spoke to uh, the Pamoni Soku, the minister was there and he said, he promised that within 24 hours, the people we see um, by the roadside in Konongo and Etiwa areas are going to, be, to go off. And I said, yes, they are going to go off so that we cannot see them. But are we sure that you are not going to tell them to go inside where we cannot see them? See, that's, that's what happened. If government is committed, when he says there is a ban, and he truly, the government truly means it, nobody would defy. But is the government telling us that they are unable to govern this nation, that they cannot um, ensure that the right things are done. I okay. don't believe it. All right, Prof. We'll be... They have mm. everything they need. Mm. The, the, the police is there, the military, the, the citizens. We are here and we are saying ban it. All right. For, you know, no, 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 halt it, maybe ban it, halt it, stop it, and then let's rethink, reconfigure um, 
the whole situation to see what... So we can do it. All right. If Pro we want to do it, we can do it. Prof, we'll be right back. Thank you very much. Running. But the trust in the water that flows through them has evaporated. Consumers are turning to sachet water, a costly alternative. But even this doesn't bring peace of mind. Even as the pollution of the rivers continue unabated, the managing director of Ghana Water Company Limited, Clifford Brimer, believes the water they produce is good enough for drinking and that there is no cause for alarm. It's, 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 it's marketing. The sachet water people want to let them know that, and to, be, to your surprise, most of the sachet people fetch our water and bag it. They don't do any treatment process, but they tell them what is in that bag is more wholesome than where they fetch it. Because they fetch it into another container. Probably the container is contaminated. And they now put it in a bag, close it and sell it to you. So they are uh, marketing issues that is creating trust issues but we can tell her that's why I told you that we've done this ISO just to tell you this is not a Ghanaian thing alone it's an international standard that Ghana Water Company has gotten its system certified that we produce water to this level so if anybody says oh I won't drink the water because I've... it's because somebody else has you let the researchers that you are talking about tell you when they run steady on our water, the sachet water, and those two, the coliforms levels, where they found most. It's not for me to, to, to tell you, but you can find out. And then you realize that, no, it's not, it's not, it's not Ghana water. The question of whether the water flowing from our taps is free from heavy metals and other contaminants is a matter of great sensitivity. It touches on both public health and trust in our infrastructure. At the heart of this issue is the Ghana Water Company, which showed us the vital responsibility of delivering water to households across the country, ensuring that this water meets safety standards falls to the Ghana Standards Authority, whose role in inspection, testing, and metrology provides a crucial layer of quality assurance. At the helm of the Ghana Standards Authority is Professor Alexander Dodu, the Director General overseeing efforts to guarantee that the water Ghanaians rely on meets the highest safety and quality standards. The Ghana Standards for water excludes the presence of heavy metals, period. So any activity which will contribute to the presence of heavy metal in water, because if you're using a borehole, it's going to be surface water. You're going to, I mean, drill down, but whatever is on the surface will percolate down. So, and heavy metal doesn't go away. So wherever there is heavy metal, it will show up in water. If heavy metal shows up in water, that water is not safe, not fit for consumption. So I think you can draw the analogy that any activity, whether it's Galam, say whatever activity, leads to lead, mercury, any other heavy metal being present and being present such that it can be in water poses a risk to human health. Anything which exposes the environment to an increased level of heavy metals puts everybody in Ghana at risk. In homes across the country, this is the new reality. Even as they pour from sachet, the people of Ghana drink with suspicion. The unseen consequences of Galamse have infiltrated every aspect of life, eroding trust and safety in something as basic as water. We use this same pipe water to bath ourselves. And as a lady, you use this water to wash your under. It's giving us effects, to be frank. It's giving us effects. Sometimes when I fetch the water and I'm going to use it to bath, and then use that same water, my underpart, it's very scary. Towns and cities across the country. You're welcome back. My guest in the studio now, uh, John Alote, Chief Executive Officer of the Forestry Commission. Uh, Martin Kwekwe, C is the Chief Executive Officer of the Minerals Commission. And Professor Gladys Nyako Ansa is Associate Professor of the and co-principal investigator of the University of York, UK, and University of Ghana Galamsey project. Um, 
This show is brought to you by Bank of Africa, strongest a group and closest a partner, MTN everywhere you go. HSE University, educating ethical and entrepreneurial leaders for Africa. Robert and Sons Optical Services, your comprehensive eye care service provider for 33 plus years. My Way Insurance, dial star 165, hush on MTN to join My Way today. DBS, DPS, DPS, international, where every child shines. That's a new school in town with such good record. Flamingo paints, simply superior. And my outfits, as always, is by Konati Clothing. They are at Adenta Shopping Centre, Adenta Down. You can call them 244 Konati Clothing, where what's, what you wear counts. Now, uh, that's how time runs. But let me share a few of your messages and I get back to my guests. Um, this one, you say that President Akufuado has no intention of fighting Galamse. He's only dancing around the problem to protect his selfish interests. <laughs> this is what happens when you give fried fish to a cat for safekeeping. Um, next one says President Akufuado seems not to understand what it means to quote, put your presidency on the line and quote. And I pray some English scholar will send him a note explaining that to him. So he does the needful um, heat out to have been put, heat ought to have been put on him to resign ASAP without any excuse. Well, he'll tell you that he has, in fact, because he will explain and the NPP will explain to you, even though some people dispute that, that this is the reason the NPP is said to have lost the elections in 2020 in almost all Galamse or mining areas except one place, Zetakwa. Emmanuel J. Bequing, you say, as an ordinary citizen, it worries me that I have become numb to my government's rhetoric on Galamse crimes, but as one whose livelihood depends on agriculture, I must be awake from deadening posture. This deadening posture, that's why we must all join organized labor. Christopher Clovey, you say, I don't know at what point an MPP supporter can take a deep breath and say, huh, my party failed Ghanaians, end quote. Our leaders need to know when they fail us so they can make corrections. Uncle Ben, Joe, you say it's valid and justifiable. What does the EC have to hide that? Okay, it's enough of that. Thank you. Now, we have very, very limited time and it so often happens. The response from the public is a question I put to you, that if you are in charge to ensure that this does not happen and is happening, and all the work you say you have done over how long now has only led to a worsening situation, you don't deserve to remain in that office. What do you say? Something, I serve at the pleasure of the president. I'll leave it as that. Would you say you have done well? Extremely well. You say the best way is to give licenses for, to formalize the processes. You have given 1,500 plus within a short period of time. Well, we should have solved the problem, but it is worse. Well, not necessarily. Something, I will now indulge you. Mm -hmm. I will plead. You see, last weekend, today, the researchers, the professors, the likes of uh, Madame Glasses Nyakun, uh, Sampini and Co, are giving Erastus, you know, they get like 30 minutes to explain the issues very well. Mm. Uh, I have to go and buy airtime and also, you know, explain what we've done. Uh, I wish, rather than just come and answer questions and try to explain, be accountable to Ghanaians, we are also giving our opportunity to also showcase what we've done. I hope that opportunity will come because, like last week, yeah. uh, I mean, Erastus has like Erastus, eh? And like 30 minutes. The other professor had about, you know, some 30 minutes. They were explaining, which is fine, because then we understood the 
Yeah, to borrow your word. This was not intended. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Uh, so yeah. we also need more time that's, that's fair. to be able to explain in that's detail fair. the achievements of the government, that's what fair. government has done. Mm. Uh, a quick one, something uh, on the forest issue. We don't allow lawful small scale mining forest reserves. Mm. So anything that happens in the forest with that effect is illegal. So let's, let's, let's circle that and then put it aside. There's no lawful small scale mining in forest reserve. It's not allowed, it's not permitted. So that's out of the way. Now, if you say they should ban mining in forest reserves, uh, again, that's why government is calling for engagement to explain a few things and then we can move it from there. Uh, so it means that any call for a ban means that you should stop large scale mining in forest because you can allow small scale. So are we saying, okay, Newmont, Chirano, Wasa, and all those mines should stop, or Ghana Bossa that has been around since 1940 to stop. That is one. We need that understanding. Or is it a case that, oh, okay, uh, there's no law which says you cannot mine in forest reserve. We want you to stop it all together. So in that case, you are saying to government or to the minister, don't issue new licenses. So these, these ones, for example, the government can look at that and say, okay, if you say we shouldn't issue new licenses in forest, you know, uh, for X, Y reason, until we sort out a few things, we can look at it. That's why I'm saying that this engagement government is calling for is not like the usual talk shop. It's just to clarify a few things which in, in some of the statements, we, 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 I think we got it all wrong. Because so, so, there's, there's no small scale in forest. It's illegal. Do, so do if you say, hang on, if you say yeah. stop mining in forest reserve, mm. then you're asking that the likes of Newmont, Ghana Bauxite, uh, uh, Wasa underground and the other Chirano, they shouldn't operate. The 15 uh, companies mm -hmm. that the uh, fourth estate has flagged, mm -hmm. all of which companies have been traced to some MPP guys, are, are they, they are mining in the forest reserve or they have made application to mine in the forest reserve? All of these, are they, they are not small scale? They are not small scale. I'll, I'll say a few things and defer to my senior brother to respond. What to me is company is not small scale? No, hang on. I'll, I will say a few things. Okay. Sometimes you need to give us time to explain the law. All right. Then I'll give you an opportunity to my brother on my left to, to talk about that because he issues the forest entry permit. Mm. Uh, something, if you need to mine in forest, you need a couple of authorizations or approvals. For example, you must have a license, okay, issued by the minister acting on the recommendation of the Minerals Commission. He may agree or disagree then you need an environmental permit from the Environmental Protection Agency. Mm. You need a forestry entry permit for my brother's outfit. And then you even have to agree with him some kind of plan as to how you reclaim the areas you are going to impact. Again, you also need an operating permit. There, there are all kinds of permits that you require. So any company entity that has not got all these authorizations, approval of permits, anything that you do is illegal. All right. We need to put that in context. So maybe I'll yield the floor to him to answer whether these ones that have been flagged by four first said anything has been given. All right. So you might see a license in the name of a company on our website. It does not necessarily mean they've been given a license to mine because there are other approvals okay. or authorizations. So, so if small scale is not allowed, completely prohibited in the forest reserve, mm -hmm. what's going on there? Yeah, there are, um, I mean, uh, companies, large scale mining uh, companies, um, some of them have been around for a long time, uh, 20 years plus. Um, so they come for renewals. Uh, for instance, uh, Newmont Golden Ridge Limited has been there. They come for renewal from time to time. Ash Ashanti Gold, uh, Kubi Gold, they all come for renewals. We know those every, big ones. Those that every, were flagged, every year. who got, who yeah, got the have... license since uh, 2023, uh, Unipower Mining Company, the Elite Mining Minerals, Sam and Jan, Sam Pines Company, no, the, Nana and Sun Resources Limited. No, there are a lot uh, of them. Clean jobs, yeah. No, no. The only, aside the uh, three that I've mentioned, mm. that have been around and uh, no, come for renewals, you have another uh, four that have uh, permits, forest entry permits, like one is co entry mining, Kingspec, Sam and Jan. Right. That the rest, in terms of gold, this is all we have mm. that have a, a, a forest entry permit. They are the only ones. Then we have um, so some all those other, who are saying no. We have should, some other three. You should reverse this law that allows for mining in the forest reserve. They they don't know the facts. As I said, um, the 
The area they mentioned is the, the one with the globally significant biodiversity. That's correct. Look, this one is clear in the, uh, the uh, session 3.2 that the, it must come with approval in writing by the president. I've not received anything like that. Okay. So I've not issued any uh, permit to anybody uh, to mine in a, a GSB. There are other ones like the, uh, the uh, Ghana Borsite Company that has been there for a long time. Uh, then the, you have the Savannah Cement that are also in the uh, Yakumbo in the Savannah region. Um, those are non gold uh, mining, uh, you know, companies in the forest reserve. Um, all the other ones probably may be in one state or the other, but no forest entry permit uh, for mining has been issued mm. to them. Okay. Uh, Samson, let me say this. So, so we will do ourselves so, a lot so, of favor. So what is your plan? What is your plan? The two of oh. you, briefly in a minute each. What is your plan? If your plan to keep the integrity of our water bodies and our forest, everything has been working. This is where we are. What's your yeah. plan? Something, uh, as I, 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 I mentioned in the beginning, uh, we need to uh, look at why people are engaged in illegal mining, uh, especially the. What's the plan you are working to? Small scale. So we are working this towards situation. that. If we don't know that, we'll not be working towards that. We'll be mm -hmm. asking for a ban and we'll, we'll, we'll leave the ban and come back and we'll be, we'll be arresting a, a, a lot of people and coming back. The first thing is that for most of them, the, uh, they don't seem to be deriving the expected benefits from agriculture and other you know, activities that happen in those uh, communities. Now Coco is suffering. Then we have the, um, some of them who also feel that they should, be given, they should also be given opportunity to participate in a lucrative business like mining. So if you look at uh, the reforms, one of them is to you know, uh, uh, you know, have more of the uh, community mining, which will provide uh, the local communities uh, the opportunity to also participate in uh, uh, mining. Uh, we, need, we, we also need to look at the agricultural side so that they will be engaged in uh, what's the uh, gainful we employment. To, we need so, to, so we need to, working to. So based on that, so based on that, you realize that we continue to, uh, you know, uh, deal with uh, enforcement. You know, we do engagement, the reforms is being handled by Minerals Commission. Uh, we do uh, what's the enforcement. Um, on record, the, uh, the, uh, the Attorney General mentioned at the bar, uh, you know, uh, uh, conference. conference that we have 850 people being prosecuted for yeah, that I'm that's saying. still, this is what this, we have. But th so that is also telling you what we are doing in terms of uh, enforcement. If you have 850 people, so it means that something else should accompany the enforcement. Is there something else? So we need to deal with livelihood. Yeah, Mr. C, is so there something else? Livelihood is very else, important. Is, see, is there something well. else what the minister is saying, that uh, the ministers, uh, the, the MCEs, MMDCs or MCs are going to take charge and escalate the process. Uh, we have had uh, the government itself look deep within itself and say, we know DCs who are involved and everything. How do you hand the enforcement to people who are complicit themselves? Uh, Something. You know, the president has been clear on this. He says, go out there and get those things in the water body out. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no two ways about that. So we'll see the next few days or weeks to come whether those things will not happen. That is number one. Uh, something, you see, for the past two weeks that we've been watching this, again, I make no apologies because I don't want people to get the impression that we live in space and we don't know what is happening. We, we eat food from those areas. People keep mentioning names. And then you ask them to mention names or people keep saying big men are involved, some politicians are involved. And then you ask for names, nothing is forthcoming. When the Busumi Fraun thing came up, okay, and it was clear that something is linked to him in the area of illegal money, the president acted. So we hear people say, oh, this man is involved, there are big people, you know, even the other day, uh, somebody was even mentioning my name, I will deal with it anyway. <laughs> but, but something, well, let, let's, 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 <laughs> let's, let people me. say, Professor Frim from Boateng gave names, and uh, now he's, he's saddled with suits well, that he can't afford. No, something, one more thing, one more thing, one more I'm sorry, thing. but we have come to the no, end. But one and more and I want to apologize to Professor Gladys Nyako and Sir, um, because we couldn't <laughs> yeah, come to my, you uh, my, to hear a lot more from you, who has also been on the ground and can give us some 
uh, independent thoughts uh, on it. Thanks very much for your time. Once again, John Alote, Chief Executive Officer of the Forestry Commission, Martin Kwekweisi, Chief Executive, Minerals Commission and Prof, and all those that we spoke to earlier. I'm Samson Ladia Yenini. Thank you once again. This is News Farm.